we've got a problem with the chuck. <sighs> so I've done a couple of jobs with the Harrison lathe. I've been noticing something. To begin with, I thought it was the bed not being level. And research into the Harrison, it doesn't commonly have that problem. Because it's so well built, the bed is integral to the stand and it's super rigid. So my investigations then went to the chuck. Now what was happening was, every time I put something in and turned it down, it was fine. But as soon as I took it out, and then put the item back in, it was miles out. And I got to the point where I, you can't see it now, but I actually put a mark on a jaw, and then I put a mark on the job to see if it was slightly out of sync. And it's not. And what I've discovered is the jaws are absolutely worn. Brilliant. Right, so I've got a bit of uh, precision ground 3H rain bar and I'm going to put this in the chuck and then we'll see we'll just nip it up we're not going too crazy and then we shall put the DTI on right so I know that it's it, it's probably glaring on the screen but we're on the zero and then if I spin that so we've got two eight thousandths of an inch run out on that's precision ground let's see if we can and then if you look at that the needle is and I'm just lifting that up with my hands and we're getting what are we on there? We're getting three thousandths of deflection on that. Three thousandths of deflection. So if I tighten this right up so it doesn't turn anymore. can't move that anymore we are then getting exactly the same eight thousandths and this is precision precision ground and again you can see the deflection there is still three so if I move it so even up here, right, right close to the the chuck, eight thousandths of an inch. And two thousandths deflection when I push the bar up. So if you can imagine, as I'm cutting, it's giving me a tapered bar which is absolutely no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put the four jaw chuck back on and see if that has worn jaws as well. And if that does, then uh, I don't know what we're going to do. But there is a plan. And the plan is to see whether this chuck is actually attached to a back plate, which it looks like it is. Because there's a, a join here. And if it does, then we might be getting another chuck because there's no way we can afford the jaws. Especially over 300 pound plus VAT. For a set of jaws. And re-grinding them is a possibility, but I don't think we're gonna be doing it. Because in the research that I've done for re-grinding jaws, you have to have the jaws under tension and it just seems a whole lot of work when there are cheaper chucks out there that are high precision or precision enough for this workshop that we could attach to this back plate right 
So I'll take that off, chuck that in the bin. I'll give this a clean and then we'll get the four jaw chuck on. I think what I'll do is I'll give it a quick clean and I'll get the jaws turned round and then we'll have a have a little look and see if we get deflection on this one. Let's hope not. Right so I've got the four jaw on. I'll give it a quick clean of rust, it's all now lubed up. Um, and I've got this I've had to use a bit of 20 mil 20 bar, 20 mil EN8. So I've got it dialed in, so as you can see. hardly moving obviously the bar is quite a long bar so if I hold it on the end and spring it you can just see the needle move I don't know if that's coming up or even on the camera it's not even half move it to the next jaw but it's only moving because it's the bar is so long So it answers the question that the jaws on the three jaw are knackered. But at least we can carry on using that we can use the four jaw. It's not it's not brilliant, but we can use the four jaw for now. Do some work. And I'm quite impressed that I got that so close considering I've not set a four jaw chuck up for absolutely years. So that's good news, isn't it? Right, so we are on the bench. I've got the chuck on here and I'm going to take out the bolts at the back and we're going to see if this is on a back plate that we could possibly use for a new chuck which works out cheaper than a set of new jaws. Work that out. Okay, so I wasn't expecting it to be like this. I was expecting it to have a recess plate like that, uh, but none of this. So this is actually the back face of the chuck. And then inside we've got the internals. So we've got the scroll, the back of the scroll, obviously the gears, which you use with the key go there and then obviously you've got the the jaws you can just see them inside there but that side so unfortunately my plan is not going to work because I thought this would just be a back plate that we could use on another chuck so we are going to have to come up with plan B or C or D so unfortunately plan A hasn't gone to plan I thought we'd be able to use that as a back plate and we can't there's too much there to machine off and then there'd be too much sticking out 
to bolt another three jaw chuck on. So we have to go through the entire alphabet until we find a solution to get an operational three jaw chuck on the lathe that doesn't have any deflection or doesn't add to the deflection when we're cutting. So until next time, stay safe. Laters. <sighs> There's only one word for this. <laughs>